Hi, my name is Shristi and welcome to day 29 of the 30 day Mean Stack Honolulu Challenge. Um, today, there was quite a lot of things that I wanted to do today, um, from going and looking at sub documents from Mongo to adding some new stuff to the app. But because I've only got sort of 15 minutes, I thought um, best spent that time on uh, taking you through uh, some of the behind the scenes stuff on how the uh, mean stack is actually working, how the files are sort of hanging together. Um, we'll keep it fairly light, but I just want to introduce you to the types of things that you need to think about as you um, extend out your, your app. Um, now what I've got open here is expressjs.com. We haven't talked too much about Express um, explicitly, kind of gluing the different pieces together on the on the server side, on the back end. Um, Express used to be just one single package, um, but in um, in the recent versions, what what they've done is actually split it up into a number of packages. So if we go across, um, just jump over to moving um, to to four point X. Scroll down a little bit, um, and this will kind of take you through um, how Express is kind of split up. Now, even if you if you haven't kind of used Express before or you're not sure what it is, um, still this is a useful place to start, and um, you can you can kind of go through all of these different packages, and it'll give you a bit of an idea um, about how um, how Express kind of works and what it does. And if you kind of think of middleware, if you're familiar with the concept, um, Express gives you a whole heap of different pieces of functionality um, to hook in to your app. So for example, um, there's things that let you manage your cookies, um, there, there's things that let you manage um, or log parts of your, your, your sessions, um, things that let you manage your sessions, um, set up your favorite icon. So that's the icon that sort of appears at the top um, of your tabs. Um, you know, things that manage sort of timeouts, um, bit of security, all of those kind of things. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely worth it to come over here and, and just go through each one of these and, and get a better idea of all the different pieces that are, um, that are helping run your app. But if we go back to um, our app, um, we can start off with, I've just got the server.js file open here. So I've just got the, um, our, our app directory, server.js. And um, interestingly, th this, this particular file is um, almost deceptively simple um, in terms of, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't contain a whole lot of, a lot of things, but the things that it does contain uh, are really uh, so important to making your, your app work. So if we look at it from the top, um, we're, we're bringing in or we're asking um, this particular file to, um, to, to connect into this initiate file, the config file, um, we're bringing in a bit of mongoose, um, but the key outcomes of this particular file is um, that we're, we're actually performing our connection to Mongoose here or, or our connection via Mongoose through MongoDB um, through, through this piece of code. Uh, we're bringing in Express, um, we're bringing in Passport, um, and then we're actually um, starting up our app using Express. So if we jump across to the API reference, for example, one of the first pieces of code that you see is um, is this bit here, and it talks about oh he, this is the this is the code that you need to create an Express application. Um, now it talks about requiring Express, and I'll show you where that sits. But um, a lot of the rest of this code you can kind of see in this server.js file. So for example, it's got um, a variable of app, um, and that's going to have this reference to this Express package, and that's kind of what you can see um, over here. Um, only that. What, what we're doing here is actually we're connecting to another file, which is the um, located in the, in the config folder. And this folder is, um, is then initiating Express. And what we're doing is connecting it back to this, this app reference here, which is essentially the same um, as this line of code right there. Um, this, this bit goes on to actually um, test out Express using, using a get function. But you know, we've previously, through, through some of the previous videos, we've gone through um, and looked at routes and how they work. Um, you know, all of those things, they're all sort of using Express-related functionality. Uh, and then lastly, we're actually setting up the app to listen on a port. And that's similar to um, th this piece of code here, which has got app.listen, um, and it's bringing in our port, which is actually connected, which it's connecting to via the config file. Um, and looking at the port from there. So again, deceptively simple, um, really, really difficult to explain, uh, but 
it's it's kind of the brains right it's the brains behind your app now if this is the brains then the express express file is kind of the heart so let's go and let's go and have a look at the heart so that's this this folder that we're looking at over here so we'll jump over to um just in our directory so in our app just jump down to config and go down to express.js so this particular file, this is, there's a few more things going on here, okay? Um, now, the first kind of set of um, uh, require commands or, you know, what, what this is saying is, Express is saying, I want to use um, all these different kind of packages and I need those to go through and set up all the things that um, we need to make this app work. So, again, if you, if you looked at moving to 4.0, a lot of these terms that you see over here are, um, are being represented over here. So it, again, a little bit more complex if you're moving from a previous version of Express across to this one. Um, here we actually have to go through and explicitly require the different um, uh, packages which make up um, Express. Um, so let's let's have a look at this. So I don't want you to kind of freak out too much by how much is, is kind of going on here, but uh, let me point out a couple of things um, that may be of interest to you. So let's uh, let's start by looking at this particular area of code here, and it says it's it's wanting to um, to glob the the model files, and what 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 that means is that. Um, when we use the Yeoman generator, for example, to set up a model, so such as um, when we created our customer's CRUD um, models using uh, the Yeoman generator, we ended up with a new um, model file. So we, we found that in, um, in the app directory, we went down to models, and here was our customer server model. And we, we set this up, we created this initially using our Yeoman generator. But we didn't actually have to go and tell uh, the mean stack where to find this file or, or where to um, uh, where we actually um, wanted the mean stack to look for this file. And the reason for that is because this piece of code here says that anytime there's a file in this models folder, and it's got um, a, a suffix of .js, it's going to go and load that file um, as, a, as a model. So it's going to load that for you. So all you need to do when you're creating a new model is make sure you've got a file in this particular folder. And you know the, this piece of code will take care of the rest. Um, we've got a few variables here that are being set up. So nothing overly kind of fancy here. Uh, we've got some environment locals. Um, again, don't stress too much if, if that doesn't make sense to you at the moment. Um, sort of moving down, um, we're, we've got, um, we're setting our views. So we're pointing to where our server related views are sitting and that's this particular folder here. So we're pointing to this folder. Um, moving down, we've got, um, we've got some specific uh, code that's pointing to, you know, based on the type of environment we're using, whether it's development or production, there's certain additional things we want it to do. For example, we want it to log um, if, we're, um, if we're using our development environment, or maybe it's going to do some caching when we're using production. Um, moving down, um, again, so these types of things, the body passes, method overrides, these are just the additional packages um, that, we're, that we're able to use for Express. Um, this bit here is, is pretty important. Um, this is actually setting up our sessions um, using, using Mongo Store. Um, and the sessions basically can tell us um, every time we're having, we've got a connection to, um, to our Mongo database, um, the sessions kind of give you an idea of how many people are kind of connected. Um, we'll come down, we've got some security related stuff going on here. Um, We've got this piece of code, which is actually now pointing to our public folders. Um, this this set of um, code here, that's actually going through our routes. So it's looking at the um, the routes directory, and it's loading up all the files that have been um, provided as part of as part of that. Um, and then lastly, we've just got some some error handling, which is just kind of looking at whether uh, a, you know, a particular file exists at a particular route, and if it doesn't. Um, you know, there's certain errors that would need to be shown. So you can um, set up 404 or 500 errors. So if you go to views, you can see that there's a 404 and a 500 um, view that's already existing there for us. Okay, so that's 
Um, that's a little bit of background. Um, again, don't stress if that didn't make too much sense to you. You don't actually need to do too much here um, in terms of in terms of changing this code. Um, all right, so a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. Um, have a look at the um, at the at the other files that are sitting in config. So primarily um, in environment. So we've previously looked at development, and we we looked at that when we actually set up our app. This file here called all. Um, but the, the key thing is these bits and pieces here, which is sitting in this section called assets. Um, the at, so the assets that are used by your app are the JavaScript files or the CSS files that your app uses to actually uh, function. So let, let me give you an example. Let's say you wanted to use Bower to add um, a new package to your app, right? When you do that, you're, you're going to go across to bower.json, you might add it here, um, and then you would use bower um, install the package name to get your um, your new package installed. And when you go across to public lab, you'd see your um, your new bower package, right? Now in that package, let's let's just look at Angular as that example. There's a there's a set of files that you can have. Some of them will be JavaScript files, and some of them will be CSS files. When you're actually um, trying to use those files, or when you want your app to use those files, you actually need to refer to them um, as an asset. So when you go to all, you can see here, we've got some CSS files that have been set up for Bootstrap. Actually, you can get rid of that last little comma there. Um, so Bootstrap CSS files, and all of our Angular-related packages, all the ones that are sort of sitting here, they've, they've got um, a reference to the main JavaScript file um, that's being used by that particular package. One key thing to notice here is all of these files, um, they're just the, the kind of the core file, um, they haven't been minified. And the reason for that is that you can then use these files in your, um, your development environment and you can debug as you, as you need to. So that's, that's the CSS and JS kind of section here under live. The other sections that we've got here are CSS, JS, and tests. And if you recall, when we went and added our customer's CRUD module using the Yeoman generator, we created this section um, over here. So we went to modules, we added customer, and we added a CSS folder, and um, we have a tests folder. Um, now, those files are automatically picked up by our app. You don't need to go and mention those explicitly um, to set them up because there's this generic code here which is automatically going to pick that up for us. So, so this CSS section is looking at public, it's looking at modules, look, it's looking at, um, so these two asterisks here, that's you know, that's sort of saying whatever the folder name is, so such as customers, it's going to CSS and then it's picking up the CSS file for us. Same deal with, with these JavaScript files here, same deal with the test files here. So if that sort of makes a little bit of sense, when you're adding files um, that you've created into modules, as long as you put them in the right folders, um, the assets will all automatically be picked up for you. However, when you're adding packages using, say, Bower, oops, not there, um, over in library, these files you need to connect back to your app to get it to work. Now, you need to do that. In theory, you need to do that twice. Okay. And the reason you need to do that is when you're setting it up as assets, when you're developing in a development environment, here is where you connect your non minified file, right? So if I show you in Angular, we've got this angular.js and we're throwing that in here as angular.js. But we've also got this angular.min.js. So that's a minified Angular file. We want to refer to that as well, but we don't put that here. What we do is we put that over in this production.js file. Okay, so that goes over here. These files, you can see at the end of them, that's where your minified versions sit. Again, you can remove that little comma at the end. So there, that's where your minified version sits. That's the files that you want to use in production, right? So what does minified mean? It really just, you know, just speaking really colloquially, um, it's like when you squish all your files together and all you've got left is the, the core pieces that are required to make that piece of code work. Um, and the other thing you need to do when you're hosting your app in a production environment is, um, is either depending on the server that you're using, you can pass through uh, a link to your, your Mongo database 
using um, an environment variable such as such as this one here. Um, or so so for example, if we go across to development, um, you could grab that piece of code that's sitting in your development environment that's pointing to your Mongo database, um, and you can plug that um, in here, and that would then also connect to your um, to your your MongoDB. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Tomorrow I'm going to pick it up again, um, but tomorrow what we'll do is we'll try and take our app and get it up and hosted on a server. Um, so please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out bossable.com for more details, and I'll see you tomorrow.